I'm in the page in your packet called Circles, Cones, and Cylinders. Like in the last lesson, our objective here, or our goal, is going to be to write formulas for volume and surface area in terms of one and only one variable. Now we're graduating from the box into some more complex figures, namely the circle, the cone, and the cylinder. All right, before we get started, I'm going to review a little bit of basic geometry that you're going to need to know in order to be able to do this effectively. So I'm going to start with a circle. And I want to remind you that in a circle, the radius is going to be the segment that connects the center of the circle with any point on the circle. And that the diameter is going to be the segment that connects any two points of the circle while passing through the center. And what you really need to remember here is that the length of the radius is half the length of the diameter. Or you might say the radius is the diameter divided by 2. Those are two different ways of saying the same thing. Or that the diameter has a length that's equal to twice that of the radius. So again, just a little bit of basic circle geometry that you need to be familiar with and comfortable working with as we move um, through this lesson. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get the fun started. In number one, it says the formula for the circumference of a circle is given to be c equals 2 pi r. Solve this equation for r in terms of c. So in other words, we want to isolate the r and get the r all by itself. I'm going to accomplish this by dividing both sides of the equation by 2 pi. So now r is equal to c divided by 2 pi. And again, notice where it says in terms of c, the only variable left remaining on the right side is that letter c. In letter b, we're given that the area of a circle has a formula that's a equals pi r squared. Using our answer from part a, they want us to write the area of this circle in terms of c. So where it says in terms of c, we are allowed to have c only in our formula. So area in terms of c is going to be equal to pi. We're not allowed to have a variable of r. So I'm going to replace r with its equivalent from part a, namely c over 2 pi. And the formula says I'm to square that fraction. Notice that the directions request that we express our answer in simplest form. So in order to simplify the right side of that equation, there's a couple different operations I need to do. I need to do multiplication. I also need to do exponents. It's important that I do this in the right order. PEMDAS says I have to evaluate exponents before I can do multiplication. So the first thing that I'm going to do over here on the right side in order to simplify is I'm going to square that fraction. So just a reminder that squaring something means to multiply it by itself. So I'm going to multiply c over 2 pi times c over 2 pi. When I multiply the numerators, I end up with c squared. Multiplying the denominators gives me 4 times pi squared. So I can now replace the square of that fraction with c squared over 4 pi squared. I can either choose to multiply first and simplify second, or simplify first and multiply second. You'll end up with the same answer either way. I'm going to simplify before I multiply by noticing that there's a factor of pi in the numerator that'll cancel with one of those pi's from my denominator. So when I multiply my numerators, I'm left with c to the second. Multiplying my denominators gives me 4 pi. 
And so in terms of circumference, the area of the circle is equal to the square of the circumference divided by 4 pi. Notice that the only variable left on the right side of my equation is c. All right, number two. This, I think, gets fun because it starts to get real. We're working in the marketing department of a soft drink company. We're experimenting with a new can that is both slightly narrower and taller than a traditional can. I'm thinking about, of course, a Celsius can here. For this experimental can, the ratio of the height to the radius is 4, as shown in the diagram to the right. So I'm going to talk about ratio of the height to the radius. Remember, a ratio is just a comparison between two numbers. So when I compare the height of this can to its radius, the result that I get there is 4. Or in other words, if I were to cross multiply this proportion, the height is 4 times the radius. All right, so for part A, it asks us to express h in terms of r. We're done. We did that already. In letter B, it gives us the formula for the volume of a cylindrical can. They want us to use this formula in the answer from part A to express the volume in terms of only the radius. So in other words, I'm allowed to use only the variable r in the expression of my formula. So I need to replace the h with something in terms of r. So the pi is fine, the r squared is fine, but the h I'm going to substitute using its equivalent of 4r. And then I'm going to simplify. So in terms of r, my volume is going to be 4 times pi r squared times r to the first. When I add those exponents, is going to be r to the third. So this is a lot of fun algebra and recalling a lot of fun algebra facts um, from Algebra 1 and maybe even Algebra 2. Letter C says express r. This means solve for r in terms of h. So if we know that h is equal to 4r, solving this for r gives us r equals h over 4. Or if we prefer, we can express this as r equals 1 fourth h. They are two different ways to express the exact same thing. Letter D then wants us to use this to express the volume in terms of the height only. So volume in terms of height becomes pi. The r squared is going to be a problem. I'm going to have to replace the r with its equivalent. Its equivalent is h over 4. And I'm squaring that fraction times h. We know now or remember now that order of operations says we do the exponents first. So to square the h over 4, I'm going to do h over 4 times itself, which becomes h squared over 16. So in terms of h, the volume is pi times h squared over 16 times h. And again, I'm going to simplify. If it helps make all of these fractions improper fractions over 1, multiplying the numerators gives me pi times h to the power of 3. Multiplying the denominators gives me 16. And again, just a reminder that another way to express this would be to say that in terms of h, the volume is 1 16th pi h to the third. These two say exactly the same thing. And that'll be important to recognize because some of you will prefer the first way. Others of you feel, will feel more comfortable with the second. All right, I'm going to keep on moving up to the top of the next page. This is where the getting is going to get fun because instead of breaking this down into little pieces, now we're kind of focusing on the problem all at once. 
All right, in number two, it says the height of a cone is one half of its diameter. They want us to express its volume in terms of its diameter. All right, so first thing we need to know is the formula for the volume of the cone. You might remember this from geometry, you might not. Volume of a cone is one third times pi times r squared times h. If you don't remember, uh, it's on the formula sheet that you should have picked up out of your folder. We want to express this in terms of only its diameter. So in other words, we are only allowed to have the letter D on the right side. So in terms of D, the volume would be one third is fine to stay, the pi is fine to stay, but we can't leave the R there. So this is where those relationships that I talked about at the beginning of the problem come into handy. Reminder, if you have your circle, the, the radius connects the center to a point on the circle. The diameter connects two points on the circle while passing through the center. The relationship between the radius and the diameter is the length of the radius is either half the diameter or the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. I'm going to use diameter divided by 2. So I'm going to, in my formula, replace my radius with d over 2, and I'm squaring that value. The h is also a problem, because the only variable that I'm allowed to have here is d. I also know, though, that the height is one half of the diameter. So either height is one half d, or in other words, the height, like the radius, is also d divided by two. So I'm gonna replace that h with a d divided by two. And again, I always need to simplify these. So I'm going to start the simplification process by first of all, squaring that d over two to get d squared over 4. And once I do that, I can go ahead and make everybody that's not a fraction an improper fraction. Multiplying the numerators gives me pi times d to the power of 3. Multiplying the denominators gives me 24. And again, just a reminder that you could also express this as 1 over 24 pi d to the third. Either one of those is a perfectly acceptable way to express your answer. So again, this one was a little bit more complicated because we had to express the radius in terms of the diameter, and we also had to express the height in terms of the diameter. All right, number three. We know that the height of a cylinder is twice the diameter. I'm going to go ahead and start by writing that down, h equals 2d. They want us to, in this case, express the surface area. So surface area of a cylinder from that same formula sheet is 2 pi r squared, the areas of the two circles that make up the bases of our cylinder, plus 2 pi r h, the lateral area of that cylinder. And we want to express this in terms of h's only. So I want to do surface area in terms of h. So this r is going to be a problem, and that r is going to be a problem. This is a little complicated because all I know here is that the height is twice the diameter. But I do know that in a circle, the diameter is twice the radius. So in order to convert this from diameter to radius, I'm going to replace the d with a 2r, because in my circle over here, it would take two radii to make the length of one diameter. So h is equal to 2 times 2r, or in other words, 4r is equal to h, and each r is equal to h over 4, or if you prefer, 1 fourth h. So I'm going to go back to my surface area formula now, and in my surface area formula, I'm going to replace every r that I see 
with an h over 4. So this is going to become 2 times pi times h over 4 to the power of 2. The second term in my formula is going to become 2 times pi times h over 4 times h. I'm now going to simplify by using my order of operations, my PEMDAS. So I'm going to square or do exponents first. No exponents to do in the second term. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make improper fractions out of everything that's not an improper fraction. And I'm going to simplify by multiplying numerators to numerators to get my new numerator, denominators to denominators to get my two new denominator. Oh, I can simplify some things here. I can take a factor of 2 out of each of those. So this is going to become pi h squared in the numerator over 8 in the denominator. And for my second term, I can take a 2 out of each of those. So pi h squared over 2. I'm going to notice that these two that I have left in blue are like terms. I can and should combine terms that are like terms in order to simplify. But I notice that they don't have the same denominator. So I'm going to rewrite that second fraction with a denominator of 8 by multiplying numerator and denominator by 4. So again, all I did is combine a common denominator of 8. And when I combine the numerators, 1 plus 4 gives me 5 of the pi h squares in the numerator. Common denominator was 8. So 5 pi h squared over 8. Notice that the only variable I have left on the right side now is h. So my surface area has been effectively written in terms of h. If I had wanted to, I could have made that 5 eighths pi h squared. Same thing. All right. I love this. I love the integration of the geometry together with the algebra. Uh, I'm going to say for you, probably, this is difficult at this point if you're following along and you could say, yep, I understand why she did that and how come she did that. I think you're in a really good place. I think this is pretty complicated and pretty complex, which is probably why I like it. All right, I'm going to move along to number four. Number four it says the height of a cone is twice the diameter. So I'm going to write that down, h equals 2d. I'm not sure what it is that I'm going to be or how it is that they're going to express, ask me to express the formula. So at this point, I'm not going to mess around with replacing any diameters with radii. Let's just get into this and see what's what here. They want us to do the volume of the cone. So formula for the volume of a cone is 1 third times pi times r squared times h in terms of its diameter. All right, so I'm looking to have d's and d's only. All right, so let's jump in here. Volume in terms of diameter. I'm going to go ahead and make that 1 third pi a pi over 3. I'm not allowed to have an r in my formula. I'm only allowed to have d's. But radius here is equal to the diameter divided by 2. So I'm going to replace that r squared with a d over 2 to the power of 2. I'm not allowed to have an h, but each h I know from the given constraints in the problem is worth 2 diameters. So I'm going to replace that h at the end with 2 diameters. I'm going to go ahead and do exponents first. So I'm going to start by squaring that fraction in the middle. So in terms of d, the volume is pi over 3, the first fraction, times d squared over 4, the second fraction, times 2d over 1, the third fraction. And again, I can simplify now. I can simplify at the end. The choice is entirely up to you but I'm going to remove a factor of 2 from the numerator and a factor of 2 from the denominator. And so when I multiply all my numerators together, the result is a pi 
times d to the power of 3. When I multiply all my denominators together, my answer is a 6. So in terms of d, the volume is pi d to the third over 6. Or if I prefer, I can express that as 1 sixth pi times d to the third. Two different ways of expressing the exact same idea. All right, one more to go. We've made it almost through to the end, folks. In number five, it tells us that we're working with a cylinder, and we know that its height is four times its diameter. So I'm going to say h is equal to four times d. They want us to do for this cylinder surface area. So again, you probably don't have these formulas memorized, and the good news is you don't need to. You can go right to your formula sheet. On your formula sheet for a cylinder, just make sure you grab the right uh, figure. Surface area of a cylinder is 2 times pi r squared plus 2 times pi r h. And they want us to express this in terms of r and r only. So the good news is that this formula is written mostly in terms of r. The only variable we need to replace is we need to replace every h. Everybody else is fine. So I think, I'm hoping this will make this last one a nice one to finish up on. So in terms of r, the surface area is 2 pi r squared. That first term is fine. It contains only the variable r. The second term is going to become 2 times pi times r, but I'm going to replace that h with its equivalent. And we were told in the problem that each h is worth 4 d's. So I'm going to replace that h with 4d. Ooh, but that didn't help me any, did it? Because now I've introduced the d into the formula. Well, I know, based on my geometry of the circle, that every d is worth 2 r's. So now I'm going to go and replace that d with 2 r's. And I think, just to keep things neat, I'm going to do it right in the same line. Perfect. So now my formula is expressed only in terms of the radius. All right, love it. All right, so now I just need to clean this up and perform a little bit of magic algebra to simplify things. So 2 pi r squared, I'm going to make that an 8r plus 16 times pi times r to the second. And look at that, just like that, we've got a couple of like terms that we can and need to combine. So combining those gives me 18 of those pi r to the seconds. So in terms of radius, my surface area is 18 times pi times r squared. All right, well, thank you, thank you for making it this far. Uh, your homework is the next page of the packet on circles, cones, and cylinders. And until the next time, thank you for paying attention and tuning in.